Hello and welcome to Chess Please, I hope you're keeping well. Today we're going to be covering off a very fun, very easy to learn opening with white, opening with d4. I know what you're thinking, d4, fun, explosive, opening, doesn't really fit, but we're going to explore the collie system and prove you dead wrong. Let's jump in. So, getting right into the meat and potatoes of the collie system, what it actually looks like on the board, as we said, it starts off with d4, which again, often leads to closed positional games, which this isn't not one of those, but it is still pretty fun. Generally, you will see the response d5. However, the collie system being a system opening, as the name suggests, means you can kind of go about your business almost regardless of what black is doing. Now, again, there might be very specific anti collie systems, which I don't know about, but in general, you kind of will go about your business regardless of what black does. So what you're gonna do now is get your knight out to F3, a move you're pretty much always going to play or something like that as white. So why not start things off with that because it's gonna happen. They'll get their knight out or they'll do some other developing move. As I mentioned, nice little system opening. So you can kind of not ignore, I, I wanna put a caveat on that, but kind of? Anyway, when we're looking at the collie system, one of the key moves aside from D4 is this E3. Now, initially this looks very tentative, very defensive, very like not grabbing a huge amount of space, more just solid. It is those things, but it brings me on to why I love the collie system because with the Kali system, it comes with a very specific inbuilt plan. And I find one of the most fun, enjoyable and challenging things to do in chess is to have like a strategy other than develop your pieces and attack the king and look for tactics. An actual strategy, hard to come up with. Um, but the Kali system has one built in and that is pile all the pressure that you can, all that you can muster onto this e4 square with pretty much all your pieces and prepare an e4 push once that is done exploding open the center that you now control because of the initial tentative looking moves once that's done you can then start to launch an attack with every single one of your pieces given that you have taken the time to uh, secure this outpost for your for your team anyway the collie system continues with Generally, you might see something which is very typical of d45 openings, which is black as soon as they can will try to play something like c5, get a bit more space for their pieces and strike in the center. In the collie system, which isn't, if you do face a threat against this pawn or a challenge there, um, rather than immediately jumping into build pressure here, you probably just want to actually do something like c3 here, just shoring this up a bit more if they take there, take back here. Um, because again, if we take here, we no longer have that E4 push, which is our whole zeitgeist. This is what we're trying to do. So once that's done, you might see something like either um, D7 or C6. Let's go say C6, for example, pretty natural move. Again, very typical. Um, actually, both are pretty typical in this position. Regardless, once you, once that's all happened, you want to pop your bishop into this lovely little hobbit hole in here. Very nice little protection here. One other benefit of c3 is that we now have a retreat square for this bishop if something nasty like this happens, um, which actually would suit us down to the ground because now our center is that much stronger and the bishop, no skin off his nose. Anyway, bishop in here on d3. This is kind of definitive, the collie. You've got this gorgeous diagonal pointing at the king side when the king castles um, but we're not nearly done and we are not ready to push to e4 but the bishop is casting a keen eye on that e4 square and he won't be the only one so black might continue with you know potentially something like this we can kind of ignore that for now because even if takes take back with the queen the queen will still put pressure on there um, so we'll just kind of let that lie what we want to do now is either Bring our knight out to here, which I like. Again, nice little developing move. Heaping some pressure on here. Um, 
or alternatively and we'll get to this very shortly castle here and bring our rook to e1 as well what you might be thinking is this bishop looks a little goofy very blocked in but blocking in a bishop with a knight is not nearly as big a deal as blocking it in with a pawn knights very mobile can jump around just get out of each other's way pawns can get blockaded a little bit easily but this e4 pawn we're not going to let that get blockaded in um again like even now if knight jumps in here we have enough to win a pawn there so that won't happen um so this knight's going to get out of the way and this pawn is going to get out of the way this bishop ineffectual for now but will come into the game quite nicely um so in continuing their development black might do something like maybe something like this just to get a bit of breathing room for their bishop um, in which case we want to continue with our plan of um, getting our rook onto e1 and now we're very very close to exploding that center i always think of this like once we have this level of pressure it's you know in like cartoons when like the generator or like the power pumps are like being overloaded and they're like like all the nuts and bolts are flying off and it's just like something's got to give happens pretty much every episode of dexter's lab if you ever watch that show um, that's what it kind of feels like when you've just like stacked this pressure onto um, e4 here as well black might do something like castling and again they might do a ton of other stuff but this is a really solid setup like look at all this um, everybody's defending everybody and this this square is, is looking to fall if you want to go extreme as avoid pressure onto e4 i often quite like queen in here it's okay queen on e2 in d d4 openings a good place for her to be anyway um there's drawbacks of this move of course um but in general it's a nice one i just love being like this is my square no one this is my safety square no one can touch me there um as the old saying goes don't really know what black can do here uh, in terms of development like yeah not not really sure here um because we've kind of locked up the center and that's probably one of the benefits of us taking our time and being quite conservative space wise like this is all really efficient it's like an ikea bedroom everybody's packed in real tight but everybody's doing their job perfectly um which means that while we haven't crossed the maginot line here we're still in our half like none of our pieces are on the fifth rank or beyond in our own half we're incredibly solid which is great so we are almost ready if not immediately ready it's black's move uh, something like this which wouldn't be bad so now we are ready to crash on through now if they take let's just put this on the board if they take you take with the knight you're attacking this and this so very often you'll get something like takes here from here like depending on where the bishop is like you can take with the queen but then you lose a tempo here it's fine um you can take with the bishop which i actually quite like as well and now you'll find because we've taken with the knight this bishop is free to go and yeah we just have a ton of great pieces in the game and black's pieces are just sort of just sort of hands up hands in the pockets nothing really to be doing here not a great amount of squares for them to go to um sometimes you might see something like this and then this which actually i should point out um oftentimes in the collie where there is a bit of pressure here i have seen actually um to good merit particularly if this bishop is moved taking here d takes on c first just to avoid any of that nonsense i was talking about earlier on where we have like take take after some of this dust has settled um and you can like it's just a bit uncomfortable so taking here if there is pressure first before your e4 move um can make things a lot easier so after e4 if they take um take with the knight uh you're threatening this, this good bishop you're threatening this knight um generally you'll see kind of takes back and depending on this bishop take here or take here so that is generally the theory once that has cracked open and actually i'll just explore if they don't take if they were to do something like i'm not even sure drop the bishop back a nothing move um then you can push you can push in here you've completely locked a lot of these pieces out of heaven and 
unbelievably solid pawn structure so they'd have to go here to attack the whole system um, and you've got clean lines of sight here clean lines of sight here eventually you actually can start thinking of like a sacrifice here on h6 or if the pawn is still back here a very common idea is a sacrifice here on h7 putting the king in check moving the knight in here if he hasn't moved a lot of ideas of just cracking open the king side like an egg so that's the theory of the collie system i'll swap over now to a quick game that we played um to great effect which i had a, a good time with so jumping into a real game where i used the collie system this was a blitz game i played against swedish user torpus to Skogen, uh yesterday and i just wanted to showcase how nice it can be to play the collie system so um they go with a modern defense they want to fian keto early on as i say this c3 move i played just kind of with the idea that there is like some nominal pressure on this pawn already but the order doesn't necessarily matter because of the system opening and i move on with the rest of my collie system and as you see here already got looking to build um, some pressure on here might have done this first didn't c'est la vie now we move the knight in two two pieces of pressure so far three pieces of pressure so far four pieces of pressure that's just enough for me we'll play e4 we'll crack it on open and you'll see here again black with most of their pieces hands in the pockets nice little battery here but it's all going to be moot now you'll see here they haven't really challenged too much in the center and this bishop didn't get out to start um you know messing about in the game so they actually just let this e4 break lie which was ultimately their own doing because look at this now and they've played very natural no like huge big goofy blunders or anything but through all of these natural moves like this bishop's going nowhere this queen's going nowhere this knight is going nowhere this knight's their only real piece that can move anywhere and it's like here or here which will be able to hunt down this bishop there you don't want to move there so through building this pressure and look at our pieces bang all of this all of this you know eventually here eventually here bang all of this just look at this that's chaos too much chaos but c'est la vie anyway we continue on the knight moves in here pretty much the only move they had available to them and what i wanted to do was try to trap this knight so queen up here is actually now taking away that escape square for the knight um, they dropped the bishop back which was a, a decent move but we strike with g4 here again weakening move in front of the king but what are black gonna do about it absolutely nothing they are miles out of the game and here is where i make my mistakes of the game it is a chess please game there are mistakes many of them um i start to push on the attack which is just like pawn storm very primitive like bum, 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 bum. however computer very rightly and very shrewdly points out that now is the time to play queen in here because queen in here followed by knight there it's it's going to be too late for for black to do anything basically if we do like this queen in here they're gonna to have to give away the knight because like i'm not even sure like maybe something like this then this and this and then this and already this is looking pretty grim um losing a piece for black um at a minimum and again like with this pawn push here i i see where where black is coming from try to get a bit of space around their king this was still possible this was all still possible and basically the the best move for black in that situation is to give away the knight so let's see we'll just put that on the board here um the best move is actually almost just to give away the knight straight away do this because it allows them to do this with their bishop which stems the blood loss but uh ultimately wouldn't have been enough we still would have had an advantage there and we move the knight in eventually blocking off the queen again say la vie and what i liked about this was this knight has done a lot of damage we have a ton of pieces so if they take here you know i'm okay with that because or i'm okay with that in lieu of the fact that i can actually move my bishop in here completely explode whatever's in front of the king so if they take here we take with the queen and or else we take the bishop here we take with the knight 
we take the knight with the bishop here and yeah black is completely goosed here in this particular case so they drop the knight back which actually is a huge blunder so best case scenario here they are losing a pawn but they're also like the king is completely exposed and the cavalry are going to come in there prolonging the agony this move back here i'm not sure what the point of it was to be honest maybe just i suppose get the knight out of the way of the bishop but it's pretty fatal because this is checkmate so at a, a pretty 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 rapid fire destruction so as much as d4 games are stodgy and positional this was an 18 move demolition and my opponent didn't play particularly badly again a couple of things they might have done better a couple of things i might have done better but a very nice checkmate which i was really happy with little knight bishop checkmate always lovely and the golly system working to full effect it just rather than tactics and everything like that it just gave me a laser focus be like pile up on e4 that's what we're doing it's a decent plan and the people at our level of chess probably don't have the same level of plans so the collie system thank you to edward collie r.i.p died in 1932 gone too soon um for developing this system and i hope you all find joy and a bit of fun with it thanks for sticking around and if you did have a good time feel free to hit subscribe and like we recently passed the 200 subscriber mark so pretty delighted with that and thank you all for sticking around happy to take any any feedback or any suggestions for opening videos you want to cover off all the best thank you very much